All right, so at this point, we're going to get started. Um, number one, instruction number one, notice how they're all marked. The file has a number, and also at the top of the, the page, it has a number. So they're sequential. If you look at number one, which is set up WAMP server, we don't need to really do anything here. We don't really need to do anything here because this is already installed. The WAMP software has already been downloaded and installed on our computers. Question. The internet password. No, it's NCC Wireless. So the software is already installed on these computers, but when you go home, you're either going to go to the address that is on page 1, which is wampserver.com, or if you've got Mac, you're going to go over to the MAMP server. You don't need to do it here, you do it at home. You download the software, and you go through the installation process, uh, step by step, just easily click next and next and so forth, and it gets installed. These computers already have the software. If you notice on the desktop, do you see a purple WAMP server icon, this purple W? Go ahead and double click it. When you double click that purple icon, you will not see any pop up that says, Welcome to WAMP. You will not get any feedback, anything like that. It's just going to turn on. But do you see in the corner, bottom right corner, a little green W? Okay, that's the only indication that WAMP server is actually running. When you double click the purple icon here, or magenta, whatever color that is, it pops up down on the corner here and it starts off red and then it goes to yellow and then it goes to green. Mine is green, hopefully everyone's is green. Raise your hand if it's not green in the corner there. Okay, if you're on your own computer you might just have to wait a moment. Uh, I think we can still proceed and we'll see how that works. Yes, question? I don't see it coming up when you're on your computer. Oh, okay. And so, this is the, now we have a virtual server. When we get into the, the details later of a real server, such as buying a server on GoDaddy or Bluehost or one and one or whatever, um, that's a real server that anyone can access in the real world. This is a virtual server. Only you can access it on this computer. So we will have a full-featured, powerful website, but no one can access it except you on your computer. And so, in my instructions number one, it was download the software, go through the installation, double-click it, install it, confirm WAMP server works. Here's, we'll skip this part in a moment. We'll do it this way. If you see that little green W down there, click it once, and then click localhost at the top. We're going to use this term a lot, localhost. So when you get Bluehost or GoDaddy or whatever, that is a, that is a host, a hosting provider. They give you hosting. Localhost means your local computer. This computer that is right here, right in front of you. So click on localhost, and what you'll see is the web browser opens up, and it'll go to a specific web address, which is what I have listed here on my notes. Just wait for that to load up. So the address up on our web browser is simply localhost. It's not localhost.com. That would be a real server on the internet. This is localhost, a virtual server right here on our computer. And that's what my note was down here. Confirm that WAMP server works, open your web browser, go to this address. If that address doesn't work, the alternate address is this, 127.0.0.1. If you see the WAMP server config screen, everything has been installed. So if you see this screen here, with a bunch of puzzle pieces and version numbers and such, it worked. I'd raise your hand if it didn't. So to get back to this, we open the web browser, 
any web browser. It currently opened Opera, but if you like Safari, for example, the trick is you just want to go back to localhost. This tells us that WAMP server is active. There's a virtual server running and that there are no projects, no websites. No projects yet. To create a new one, just create a directory or a folder in the www folder. Let me show you where that is at. Minimize and go to your desktop and open computer. This time we're going to open the local disk. Local disk C. C as in cat. Local disk. The main hard drive. Double click that. There's a bunch of folders here and near the bottom you're going to see a folder called WAMP. So WAMP is installed, WAMP is running, this is the folder. It's about half a gigabyte. Uh, once you see that WAMP folder, it's, it's alphabetical, so once you see WAMP, W-A-M-P, double-click WAMP, and here's this www folder. Any website that I add to this folder, I will now be able to access it through the web browser as if it was a real server, a real website on the internet. So if you double-click www, and you see index.php, that's, that's this home screen that we're looking at here. This uh, server configuration screen is that, index.php. You never want to edit that or delete it. You're just going to leave that alone. This is your WAMP starting screen. And we access it with your web browser by typing localhost. So down here where it says, you don't have any projects here. Don't do this. But if we created a folder called bakery. So again, don't do it yet. WordPress is going to say, you've got a new project called bakery. So any new folder that we create in that www folder, WAMP will see it as a brand new web project. So if you were using Dreamweaver, you could create your whole Dreamweaver site, put it into that WW folder in its own folder, and WAMP will see it as a real website, and then you can, you can access your website. So again, I created another folder, another directory in the WW folder, and WAMP recognizes it. Obviously, nothing will happen if I click on it because there's nothing in the folder. Okay, so. Oh, excuse me, where did you add those um, folders? The www directory. Oh, okay. Yes. So uh, the instruction number one is just to set up WAMP server software and make sure it works. If you're on the Mac, you're going to read instruction number one, the Mac version. You're going to download MAMP, install it, check if localhost works, WAMP works. If you have any trouble, I have a few suggestions under troubleshooting. Sometimes this helps people. Uh, you have to uninstall it, install this extra thing, then reinstall it, and then hopefully it works. So sometimes this stuff works right away, sometimes it doesn't. I've done it on several different computers for several years, usually it works. Hopefully when you go to your home computer and you try it, it works. If it doesn't, and you've got a laptop, I'm happy for you to bring your laptop, and we'll check it out. Remember, we've got the lab time at the end of the day. We can help figure out how to set it up together. I'm going to close. I'm done with instruction one. I'm going to look at instruction two. On this one, we, we can go to it actually just to show you this. 
we're going to download the WordPress software. Actually, it's already downloaded for us, but I just want to show you the WordPress website. Uh, you can, if you've got the document, you can click on that address, or you can go up to the web browser. Let's go to your web browser and let's go to wordpress.org. O R G. People then ask, well, what's the difference between wordpress.org and wordpress.com? Let me show you. You would think that, but not exactly. Um, wordpress.org is basically the manual where WordPress is at, where you download the software, where you get the tech support, where you look up a question. WordPress.org, where you look for themes and plugins and get support and download the software. We don't need to download the software, it's ready for us. But when you go home, you've got download WordPress. So the .org version of the site is the manual, is the place where you download the software, where you get tech support, where you buy a cool t-shirt. And so where it tells you, for example, the New York Times uses WordPress. People Magazine uses WordPress. Motley Crue uses WordPress. And we will look at WordPress.org as time goes on because, again, this is where we can get tech support. I'm going to compare that. I'm going to contrast that with WordPress.com. WordPress.com is also related to the WordPress company. But what we're, the big difference in WordPress.com is that it says create your website for free. And I can click right now, create website or blog, and I create one right now. We don't have to do the steps that I have here of WAMP or MAMP or downloading WordPress and installing it. It's ready to go right here. And then you'd say, well, why don't we just use this? It seems so easy. Yes, it's too easy. It's not full featured. It's training wheels. This will allow us to create a website or a blog, but not an e-commerce site. Because e-commerce features are predicated on a plugin, and at WordPress.com you cannot install any plugins. So therefore it takes away so much functionality. But for lots of people, they don't need e-commerce, they don't need an amazing slideshow, they don't need a chat feature, they just want a website to quickly put their work up there to write a blog, to put their poetry, you know, a, a kind of a relatively basic website. And at WordPress.com, you can get one right away, for free. So can you start with that one and then add later? No. Mm -hmm. No, you would need to take it out of here and take it to GoDaddy. You can add to it on GoDaddy, but you have to take it out of here. So I just don't see too much of a point to use it, especially if we want to do e-commerce, because we're not going to be able to do e-commerce at all until we get it to GoDaddy or WAMP. Another downside of putting it here, besides the lack of plugins, is that you will get a website called victorsbakery.wordpress.com instead of victorsbakery.com. You can pay, I believe it's $24 a year or so, to WordPress.com, and they will take away the WordPress.com part of the address. But if you just go for the free version, you will get whatever name, .wordpress.com. They put their sort of branding on it, sort of, because it's their hosting and their domain, and you're getting it for free, and they're putting that on the, the name. And even if you pay the $24, that'll only give you the, the domain name. The e-commerce features are another $299. I don't remember if it's yearly or one-time fee. It doesn't matter. I don't recommend to set yourself up at WordPress.com. It's great training wheels, and if you take my blogging class, we use it there, but that's all we need it for, blogging. Here we need it for e-commerce and advanced features, which are plugins, we cannot use plugins on WordPress.com. So that's the big difference. WordPress.com is to get a quick, free website, pretty full-featured, but not the features we want. 
in WordPress.org is to go download the software, read the manual, ask tech support, and so forth. So when you go home, you want to go to WordPress.org and um, download the software and continue to follow these instructions that we'll look at. But on our computers here, it's already been downloaded. The WordPress software is already waiting for us to use. Let me show you where it's saved at. I'm going to minimize all of that. And I'm going to open another computer window and another local disk C window, and you'll see at the bottom, WordPress folder. There's a WordPress software waiting for us. So my instructions number two are saying, at home, go to WordPress.org, download the zip file, unzip it, and then number 1E, uh, or actually 1F, move your WordPress folder, not the zip file, into the WW folder. So we need to do this. I've got one window where I've got the WordPress folder, and I've got another window where I've got this WWW folder. I did say move, but I should have said copy. If you already did it, that's okay. But what I'm saying is, from my local disk C, I'm going to see WordPress folder, and I've got another window here of the WW folder in the WAMP folder. I'm going to right click WordPress and copy. Go to WW, right click and paste. So I'm copying, I'm making a copy of the WordPress software from that other folder into my WWW folder so that I have a brand new out of the box WordPress site. Let's take a moment to do this. Raise your hand if you need any help. You got a little lost. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So if it worked, let's move on. All that we needed to do at this point was drag a copy of the software to the WW folder. This folder then, uh, this WordPress folder is the full WordPress software which we need to install. And again, uh, the way we're doing it here honestly is the hard way. If we had GoDaddy or Bluehost or whatever, there's a button that says install WordPress and you're done. We're doing it the hard way for various reasons because if we're in a public lab like this where people come in and out and do different classes and different instructors and such, if your site were saved here and then 40 more people throughout the day sit on your computer, they're going to mess up your site. So we have to create our site from scratch and then save it and take it with us and then come back and set it up again and then move on. Our site is not going to be available here all the time for someone to mess with it. So we have to do it the hard way and as we do it a few times it'll make sense. Uh, and that's why I wrote it all down in the instructions and I give help. But at this point my instruction number two, um, step one, was to copy this WordPress <coughs> software into the WW folder. I'm gonna close one of these windows and just leave the WW open my instructions here, I did one, section one, now I'm on section two, set up a database. The great thing about WordPress is that it is very powerful and robust and because it runs on a database. There's a database that holds a bunch of data. This in a sense is sort of a database. A person's name is attached to an ad code. There's data connected here. And so a database on a website is much more complex. There's a product connected to a price, connected to a picture, connected to weight and height, that's a record in a database. And all of them together is a database. So WordPress uses a database and it stores everything about your site in the database. Even the background color and the size of your text and how many users you have enrolled and everything. So the next step here is we need to create a database so that WordPress can connect to the database and store all of this information. So if you've used a site like a site builder like Dreamweaver before, this is very different. Uh, usually a Dreamweaver site doesn't need a database. WordPress definitely needs a database. So my step number two here is saying, in your web browser, let's get used to going to this address, localhost slash phpmyadmin. So http colon slash slash localhost slash phpmyadmin. And it's right there. An instruction two, sub instruction two, sub sub instruction A. So that's contained in the WAMP. Yes, on WAMP. On the MAMP it's slightly different. Uh, I think it's the numbers and then slash PHPMI ad. So let's go to this address. So that means that this local host is the local host on the computer. Yes, exactly. Localhost always means your computer, why, whether it's Windows or Mac. Yes? I need some help because my computer shut down. 
I'm going to need to come back to you because that's a lot of steps that you've missed. So just follow along for the moment. Uh, try to go follow these steps for a bit, but I'll help you in just a bit. Um, here under localhost, um, this is where we can manage our databases, where we can do backups and such. But at the top, my notes here say go to that address, and then at the top nav bar, you'll see a button that says databases. Click on databases. On the left side and in the center, it'll show us a list of databases and a way to create a new database. And my notes say, in the Create Database box, add the name WordPress. So we're about to create a WordPress database called WordPress. Type the name WordPress there, don't change anything else, and click Create. <laughs> you should get a pop-up that says database WordPress has been created. And you should see it down at the bottom here or on the left side as well. So there you go. Uh, how many of you created this database? Raise your hand. Okay, now take your hand and pat yourself on the back because you're a database administrator now. <laughs> Okay, so we've got none of the websites? Do you, are you sure that you've got a green W in the corner? The WAMP icon? Okay, uh, I'll help you in just a moment. Um, what we want to do at this point is we've got a database it's on instruction number two, number two. So after we've made the database and we've put the WordPress software into the right folder, it's time to connect the WordPress software to the database. That's step three. So up on the address, let's go to http colon slash slash localhost slash WordPress. Press enter. So localhost will show you the WAMP welcome screen. Localhost slash PHP my admin will show you the databases. And localhost slash WordPress will show you your WordPress site. If at this screen you don't see a, multi a multilingual welcome message, a couple of things might have happened. Maybe in your WW folder, you put in a folder here called my site. Well, clearly then, this will not work because there is no folder called my, there's no folder called WordPress in this www folder. It's called my site. So if you change its name to something else, whatever you called it is what you will see there. That's why my instructions say just call the folder or, or keep the name of the folder as WordPress. And if you use capital letters and lowercase letters, that's important too. Keep it all lowercase. On this screen, choose a language. So I'll just click English and continue. And here it says, you're about to install WordPress, so you need these items. A database name, which we just created a moment ago. It was called WordPress, remember? We need a username. I've got it in my notes, what the username is. We need a password. I've got it in my notes, what the password is. And we need a host. Our host is usually going to be localhost. It's the computer here that we're working with. And table prefix, don't worry about that. So click Let's Go. So database name. 
it's not that it knows what database you want, it's just that it's choosing the default database name. If you created a database called My Amazing Site, then clearly you need to name, you need to say the name of that database. The DARS is WordPress. My notes here, step three. So sheet two, step three, sub step D, the username is going to be root. Lowercase. If you put an uppercase, this won't work. Password. There is no password here, so delete that. Don't put a space. That technically is a character, so nothing. So no you so the username is root, no password. Database host is localhost. Right? Because our address on top here is localhost. Table prefix is fine. We can have multiple sites in one database. I don't recommend that, but we can have multiple sites in one database and we could differentiate them with different prefixes. We're only going to have one site in this one database. I think that'll work better. So click Submit. So those of you that need a little help, let me do one or two more steps, then I'll catch you up. Um, I think we're all pretty much on track, but I'll help everyone in just a moment. Submit. It says, all right, Sparky, you've made it through this part. Run the install. The part a moment ago was to connect the software to the database. Next comes the part of actually customizing this brand new empty WordPress site. Questions? Uh, already exists. My already exists. Did you already try to set up this WordPress before we did it together? Okay, I'll help you in just one moment. Here, it's asking us to add the title of the site and the administrator of the site and, and so forth. This site, again, is not going to be live. It's not going to be on the real internet. It's just going to be on our computer. And you might already have a WordPress site and a, and a GoDaddy site and so forth. You can set this up to be the exact same thing, or you can make this up. Usually in these classes, I make up a company called Victor's Bakery. So you can do the same, or make it up, or make up your real site, or call it version 2.0, or whatever. We can, of course, change this whenever we want. But this is the, going to be the title of my site. Not the address. The address is going to be localhost. This is just the title that people will see on the site. We need a username and a password to log in. This can be anything we want, but my notes here, just so that we don't forget this, my notes say on step 3, H uh, or 3G, add a site title, add a username, and I'm recommending here admin and then on H, add a new password, and I'm recommending it to be password, with a capital P. These are terrible usernames and passwords that I have on my notes. But just to get started, we're going to use them. In the real world, you would not have a user called admin and a password that is password. You're going to get hacked. So this is just an example. Username. Admin. Lowercase. Password, which will be password. I'm going to do a capital P. It tells me very weak, but that's okay. Password. I can't show it to you, but that's password, and it's right there on my notes. 3H. Password with a capital P. What's a password again or anything? Or Say that again. What's a password again? This password is to let us log into the site to make changes. Right, but uh, what is it? Or, or yeah, anything. you could, of your choice, any password you want. But on my notes here, I'm just adding the password password. And then an email in case you forget the password to help you retrieve the email. Uh, the password, I mean. So your email address. Fake one will work. It's, it's not a real site. Um, so it doesn't quite matter. 
when it's a real site, we do want the real email to be able to log into it. At the moment, our site will be on localhost, which means only on our computer. It's not accessible by the internet as a whole. Therefore, it's not accessible by Yahoo and Bing and Google, the search engines. So if this was a real site and you didn't want the search engines to, to find you, you can turn that off. If it was a real site and I did want the search engines to find me, I would turn it on. This is a testing site. It doesn't really matter. But I'm going to put it on do not allow search engines because it's not a real site. Um, even when I upload it, I might not want the search engines to know about it yet until I know it's ready to go. And this, I never like the wording of it. It's sort of like when we vote on those propositions and it's backwards. A vote yes on this means no, we will not fund that. So it's sort of like this. Turn this off to not allow search engines. Turn it on to yes, allow the search engines to find your site. Click Install WordPress. And again, this might be, you might be thinking, I just came here to learn how to sell products. Yes, but um, we need to set up WordPress, we need to set up a site, then we can do that. And I'm showing you here. This is how my company does this. I've been asked the question at least more than once. Well, why can't I just use my own GoDaddy WordPress? Perfect. Use it. But WordPress is live. When it's on GoDaddy, when it's on Bluehost, it's out there for everyone to see. If you make any changes on your live site, people will see it. So my company, what we do is we work on a copy of the site on WAMP. We get it working perfectly, then we upload it, and it's live. Obviously, we save some time and effort by working on the live version, but if something goes wrong, now the site is broken. We better find that broken problem on a, on a WAMP version, and then upload it. Question? Sure, you can uh, you can do that, but it might depend on what kind of changes you're making, and it might take longer to update than you thought, and then you're losing business because if your site is not active, Neiman Marcus can afford to be down for a few hours, but can you? Can you afford to be down for a day or a week? Yes. So we're almost there. We created the admin account with a password. Click login. It asks you for a username and password, which we just created a moment ago and is on my notes. So log in with the admin password and password as the password, capital P. Unless you didn't put a capital P like I did. And if it worked, you will see at the top left corner the little WordPress logo. You will see the name of the site that you that you added, Victor's Bakery. At the top right corner, it will tell you how the admin. And it will be in the dashboard. If it worked, we've got a WordPress site now. If it didn't, we're getting close to a break now. So if this worked, great. If it didn't, we're going to take one more break. Uh, during the break, confirm that this works. If it doesn't, call me over. I'll turn the printer back on if you want to print these instructions. It's uh, 242. We'll be back at 252. And then we will proceed. Does anyone need a little help?